Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips, here we are again. Well, we're back at Dive Stores, by the way, great store, and we're going to show you around a little bit, because we're going to do several uh, uh, tech tips here. Hydro versus visual. Yeah, we've had a couple questions, and one question the other day was kind of intriguing, because one of the divers, <clears throat> thank you for all those comments and questions, by the way, they really help. So please, make comments, make comments. Um, the, the, the diver says, why do I need to get a hydro and a visual? I think the dive store is just ripping me off. They can do one test and dub a do the tank is good. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So I thought I would take just a minute or two and just quickly make sure that you understand <clears throat> the distinct difference between a hydro test and a visual test. They are completely separate, completely distinct from each other. There's no relationship between the two. And yes, you need both. Okay. Let's deal first of all with the uh, what do we deal with first let's deal with the hydro test first of all because the hydrostatic or pressure test it may be called it's called hydrostatic by the way the word hydro is in there what's with that because it's done in the water yes like hydroelectricity comes from water so hydrostatic water pressure test and the hydrostatic test we'll do that first because the hydrostatic test is universal Every high pressure cylinder, I don't care if it's an oxygen cylinder that your, your grandfather uses so he can breathe easily. It doesn't matter if it's an oxyacetylene tank that's used for gas welding or a scuba tank like this, this one. This is a pony bottle, of course, but it's a scuba tank. Okay. And it doesn't matter what the pressure is. The pressure could be 1800 PSI, as many of them are. Oxygen bottles are usually 2015 and it could be as high as 4000. Maybe there are 6,000 PSI cylinders. So, yeah, there's a three-day dive right there. But anyway, the hydrostatic test is a pressure test. Now, that's obvious. That's in the name, hydrostatic, water pressure uh, uh, test. It's a pressure test. And it is. It, it only does one thing. It actually tests the elasticity of the metal. Yeah, now, I know this is aluminum. Your tank could be steel. But the simple fact is that both all, all metals, but both aluminum and steel tanks stretch when they're filled and they shrink as they're empty. That's right. If you measure it, and it's actually a measurable amount, you can actually measure the tank before it's filled. When it's empty, take it to the dive store and measure the diameter again, and it's bigger. Yeah? And then when, you, when the air goes out, it shrinks. That applies to any piece of metal. You dig any piece of tin, any piece of metal, and you bend it back and forth enough times, it'll break. That's right. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. The metal, as it, as it expands and contracts, expands and contracts multiple times, it changes. The, the actual structure of the metal inside changes, and it begins to lose its elasticity. So now it becomes brittle. It snaps. You don't want that to happen to your scuba tank. Do I have to draw a picture? Work with now. You do not want your scuba tank to become brittle because the next time you take it into dive source or wherever it happens to be and you fill it, it'll start to stretch and snap. Now, you don't want that. So the hydrostatic test, <clears throat> and this applies to every cylinder, every high pressure cylinder made, regardless of their function. The hydrostatic test does one thing only. It tests the elasticity of the metal. So what they do quite simply is they fill this tank to a very high pressure much higher than the stamped pressure. In this particular case, this is a 3,000 psi tank, so it's filled to five-thirds of its normal pressure, which means it's filled to 5,000 5, psi. 5,000 psi? Yeah. They take the valve out first. Yeah. If you saw a previous uh, video of ours uh, done right here, a good old dive source, uh, uh, it, has a, it has a safety disc which breaks, it pops in case the pressure goes too high while it's being filled. Well, they take that out because that would certainly burst long before 5,000. So they take that out. And I, if you go back in my videos, uh, Kevin actually has a great video of us doing, well, actually watching a hydro test. Anyway, once again, so in the hydro test, they fill this to a very high pressure. The tank stretches a lot more than it usually does. And then they let the pressure off and it shrinks back down. Aha. Uh -huh. Here's the trick. Again, go back to that video. When it shrinks back down, it doesn't shrink back down completely to its original size. By original, I mean before it was filled up. There's a little wee bit of residual expansion. That's what it's called, residual expansion. They measure that. And when they measure that, from the, from the special tables they have, from the specifications they have, they're able to say, yes, 
this metal is still very elastic and safe to use. Or they may say, oh, oh, there's too much permanent, permanent expansion. And this tank is no good. It, it is no longer elastic. It didn't shrink down small enough, you see. Anyway, the point is that the hydrostatic test does nothing other than measure the elasticity of the metal. That's all it does. It doesn't give any indication of what's in the tank, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't give any indication about the threads. It doesn't say anything about the condition of the tank other than the elasticity of the metal. Okay? And then the, the hydrostatic... Uh, uh, facility uh, 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 operator stamps on the tank. It stamps on there when that was done. In this particular case, it was done in October of 2021. And that's good for five years. And many, many studies have said that if it's, if it's elastic in normal operation, it's good for five years. So sometime in, in late 2026, right, it'll have to be retested for elasticity. Okay, good, good. Now, away we go. So what about the visual? Why do we need the visual? The tank's good. No, the tank is not necessarily good. The tank metal may be elastic. The tank metal may pass a hydrostatic that pressure test I just explained to you. But it could be full of water. It could be full of rust. There could be pits on the inside. It could be corroded. It could be all kinds of aluminum oxide streaks. It could be all kinds of problems in there. Hydrostatic test doesn't care. Metal's elastic. So the visual test is very important. In fact, the visual test is so important that for scuba tanks, it has to be done every year, annually. Why? Other tanks don't, some tanks don't have visual tests. Yet. Or if they do, and they do, it's the visual test, the visual examination is done at the time of the hydro. And hydro, as you see, for scuba tanks, and many tanks are five years, some are 10. Some are longer than that. But generally speaking, a hydro test is every five years. And when a non-scuba tank is hydro-tested, they do a quick visual to make sure it's okay, and away it goes. For scuba tanks, it's done every year. Why? Well, unfortunately, it's because scuba divers are not very careful. Well, that's not exactly true. I don't want to be, I don't want to talk down scuba diver, but to some extent it's true. You know, it's a sport. We're out there having fun. We're not going to worry about it. It's, you know, I, I, oh, the gear works. I sucked on it, got air. What's the problem? Let's go. There's a little bit of a laissez-faire attitude about, uh, about scuba equipment, sometimes among many divers, uh, number one. And secondly, scuba tanks are used in a marine environment, water. And water is not good for most metals. And even worse, most, I would say, most scuba tanks are used in salt water, a true marine environment, salt water. Well, definitely salt water is not good. You get salt water inside of a tank, I don't care what it's made of. Steel's the worst, perhaps, but aluminum doesn't like salt water either. You get salt water inside of your tank, and in no time at all, it's going to be badly corroded on the inside. It can still, it can actually cause it to burst. And this is what causes a bit of an issue. We have had, I have seen, scuba tanks that actually passed the hydro test, okay? The expansion test. And they said, yes, the metal in this tank is still elastic. It can be used. And we put the valve back in, turn the valve in, and fill it up, and air comes out of the shoulder. Right here, we had one, this a number of years ago, and I'm, I hear this hiss. I thought the valve O-ring wasn't good, but I just replaced it. And I'm looking at it, and I hear this hiss. I sprayed it with water, and right there on the shoulder of the tank, I made a little video of it, there's an air stream coming out of the there's a hole in the tank. Well, the guy that did the hydro test, he could care less. He probably didn't even know. He tested the tank, it stretched, came back, ba boo, out of here. The only way we found that was by doing a visual, looking on the inside if we could see that there was corrosion on the inside of the tank. So there are two completely separate, distinct operations, and yes, you need both. The diastore is not ripping you off. In fact, just the opposite. The true cost of a hydro test, true cost of a visual test, is probably more than what you're paying. The diastore is interested in one thing only, and that's your safety. Nobody in the diving industry wants someone, a diver, or anyone to get hurt while scuba diving, and that includes the tank. They certainly don't want a tank to explode. Bad for business. So, bad for the diver first, right? <laughs> and bad for business second. So, yes, you need both tests. They're economical, and they're necessary. So, don't, uh, don't go in there and give your dive star owner a hard time. In fact, go in there and cheerfully and say, please do a good test on my tanks. He'll take good care of you. I guarantee it. So, there you go, guys. Hydro test. 
visual test, the differences, and the fact you need them both. Yeah. Hope there's something in there of interest to you, and we'll talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips at Dive Source in Whitby, Ontario. Talk to you soon.